Big Poppy in the house. All right, this is uh, video three for Lead Loadmaster troubleshooting. Uh, what we're going to set up today is we're going to put the uh, the case uh, travel thing here on uh, the rods and set that up for the case to be able to go into your uh, shell case um, die here. And we'll go ahead and get that set up. All right, so first thing what I want you to do is since you've already did this and it's probably set over 24 hours this should be really um, uh, slippery real smooth it almost feels like it's got a coating on it like wax so the next thing what I want you to do is take some of this uh, clean ride and it does settle so you have to shake it up when you use it is take some of this and put it on a rag and then you're going to take, uh, this is called your case slider, okay? And I want you to take that and coat it real good underneath that bottom side. And then I always put on the front of that where the case goes against it, I always put some on there as well. Okay, we'll set this aside. Now what you do is take it and put it on here, just like this, and it should slide real easy and it should be smoother than a baby's butt on here, okay? And then that's going on, uh, you know, your carrier is uh, the main piece that everything uh, attaches to it, okay? So that's real slippery. And in this, it's got a hole, uh, so you want to take your rod and on the rod side it's got where it's rounded here and then you want both screws facing you to the press and then it's got this little rod thing here so what you want to do is you want to take and slip this in and put it through your slider here okay just like this and you're going to slide this on and then you're going to feed it walk it forward and then the this rod has got a rounded end on it you're going to let it fall in place okay now what you want to do before you tighten this nut this bolt right down here is take your press take your press lift it up about halfway okay and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pencil you're gonna put a pencil between the carrier lip out here and your slider unit here and you're gonna hold that in place now that gives you the clearance that you need in between the rod and being able to work your press. So then take your uh, 7 16 wrench and tighten up that bolt. And just snug it up. It don't have to be overly uh, tight. Okay, pull your pencil out of there. And it should cycle real smooth. All right, now I'm gonna, down here into your press, you've got this, uh, let's see what they call that. It's, I'm not sure if that's called the yoke or if it's called the, uh, let's call it a yoke for right now. I don't know the proper term out here. All right, and it's got a hole in it for your rod to go in and then you've got a nut on the back side of it that goes uh, next to your press okay so I could tell you but I'm gonna show you as well you're gonna want on uh, this is a 40 cal uh, caliber so you're gonna have two threads showing on the right side of the nut and I'll give you a close-up here shortly uh, and then what you want to do is there's two holes in this uh, 
yoke here and only one of them actually works so you'll know if you got it in the right one or the wrong one okay so then you're going to take a 11 16 wrench and you're going to tighten that up and again making sure that you're keeping all this straight as you go so like before you actually put that rod in there uh, I should have told you this but tighten that up and um, for the most part if you got a loadmaster if you set up for a 380 and 9 millimeter and the 40 mo most of the time if you have the two threads showing um, this is going to be the correct setup for each one of those as far as the case going into the shell plate holder and then the following one coming be right behind it. Okay? So what you want to do is take this up, come down, take one of your shells. Okay? And you, and I don't let that fail, then I? Okay. So then you're going to come forward. You're going to go all the way up. It's going to go into place. It's going to come back out. Come back down. Take your next case and put it right in front of it. Now, when I go back all the way up to the top of the travel here, these two cases should not touch each other. Okay, if it's set up correctly. And as you've seen, that is working perfect. Okay, back down, take you another one. Put it right there. Come all the way up on your stroke. Still not touching. That's what you want. Put it in front. Have five fingers and let them fall around the place. So again, when the two come together, the shell plate holder is rotating. And then the next shell is right before it goes in. Okay, so again, now it's going to come off, first round into your bin, let's put a, another one here, come down, same thing, go in, You're making sure that it's set up correctly. They're not touching. And let's just go ahead and run those out. Set these because we're going to use them again. Example here. Okay, one thing that I failed to mention is what I want you to do. On this top screw on your slider here, I want you to tighten that all the way in snug. This bottom one, you're going to back it out slightly. You could probably, when I mean slightly, you're probably getting maybe your fingernail in between it. Or if you got filler gauges around, probably, I don't know, three to six thousandths filler gauge. And that's the gap between here. So now what happens is if your travel here is not correct, what you want to do is that bottom screw here is you want to keep bringing it in just a little at a time. Okay? And then the more that you get, the more you screw that in, the more tension and resistance that it puts it puts on this here and it actually makes it slide a lot better okay because it's getting the full range 
and as you can see when it comes out see how it's it's almost flush exactly on the back side of this right here right now alright now let's say for an example that uh, let's see here let's say for an example that I took this and we're gonna just call it a yoke for right now that your rod goes in let's say that you've got that all the way in okay so what's gonna happen with these cases now is when this goes around on the shell plate this next one here when it comes in you're going up on the stroke these two are gonna hit and what's gonna happen if they've got them too close and they're hitting it will put a bind on it and this handle is going to be very it's going to have a lot of tension and stress on it and it's almost uh, very difficult to actually pull the handle and finish that uh, full stroke on that okay so when these two are hitting this one here so this one here and this one here and let's see I think I can move move it mainly okay maybe not all right so for an example when these two cases are hitting each other that is not set up correctly and you can tell if it's just slightly just a tad where it's hitting you don't have to go and adjust this yoke down here into the bottom with your nut you can do that with this bottom screw Okay, just screw it in just a little bit. Now, if you continue to bring that in and it's still hitting, then what you have to do is you have to take this and back this out. And I would probably do a thread at a time. Okay, so as you're backing it out, take your nut, tighten it up. Remember, you got to come back and put your pencil between this and this carrier here to get the correct alignment. Okay, so that should fit right there for your correct alignment. If you don't have that alignment correct, these two are going to rub together like this, and it's not going to want to cycle correctly for you. Okay, so the more you go in, the closer the two... The more that you turn that in on that yoke, the closer these are going to come together. When you back it out, the farther you back it out, the farther away these two get. And what you want to do is when these two are almost ready to hit, it's not much more than maybe a couple sheets of paper. Well, let's see here. They're probably missing each other. There's probably an easier way to do this. All right. So when they there's about that much room between those two cases before it starts to advance it. Not very much room at all. Okay? All right, let's uh, go ahead and do the primers. I want to put some in it. We've got this set up. So we're going to take and put the case on. We're coming down. We're going to come up. So we're going to put our first one here. It's going to advance. We're going to back it out, come back down. Advance. Come back down, put your next one in, goes into place, advances, gonna have one starting to come off, back down, put it in front, advance it.
Do you hear anything grinding? Should have had one there. So there I have stroked it, so come back. Advance. Let's go ahead and These have primers in them now. Okay, one gentleman uh, is was having some problems with it. He got it figured out uh, with his primers as far as seating, seating them. Okay. And that's all done on the left side of your press. Um, and there's a bolt uh, that comes up and it goes through the part on your press itself. I can't show you mine because my bolts are longer because I have the uh, uh, primer system, alarm and all that in place plus my powder uh, sensor. So my bolts are actually longer than what comes with the manufacturing press. But this is ideal what you need. And basically when you screw that up through the top of the uh, uh, part on the left hand side you you're looking at maybe one to two threads one to two to th one to two threads on this ought to be above that bracket on your press for proper depth seating of your primers now it does give you a little bit of room to where you can make it a little bit farther in or a little bit farther out but it needs to be nice and flush and slightly lower than the wall of the case so when you run your finger through there you ought to feel a little bit where it's a little bit uh, lower in the center okay now um, if you want to know what is considered uh, the seating depth is uh, too much. Uh, when you start getting into that threshold, you are going to see you are going to see a little dot in the center of your primer. And just in case that one don't show up, let's see if we've got a. Uh, I like mine seated well so you'll see for the most part on mine um, where you've got that denotation just a little bit and hopefully you can see that it just slightly right in the center okay now let me try to take it off the tripod here So what I want you to look at is when this is coming up and I'm going down on here, you can see, you can see right there of that post that comes up to seat your primer, okay? And then the spring is on the back side underneath this plate. So, and then when you go down, come back up, you've got that post showing right there. All right. Now, how this works, and I'm going to bring this back down here. So right down here, right there. What happens is this comes down. This comes down, and you can see in here, see where I'm raising that up? 
So when that shell plate, when that shell uh, brass is uh, the the case is around there, okay, it comes up and down. All right. So when you bring that all the way up, bring it all the way up. What's happening is, see this right here. This makes content contact with that head of that bolt, and where you have that set at puts tension on this that pushes this all the way down and allows the post to come up in the top putting pressure on it to seat the primer okay so if your primers are not going deep enough then you're going to or too deep it's all in this uh, bolt here that you're going to need to make that slight adjustment to it okay All right, bear with me for a minute. And hopefully we're still uh, recording. Okay. So now what I want to do is now you got your brass feeder. Okay. So, you know, I buy these uh, dividers to keep my tubes nice together. I buy those from uh, Titan Reloading. Uh, you guys have already seen where I put recipe cards on all my uh, presses. It tells me exactly what the bolt is, uh, the caliber it is, uh, what powder I'm using, you know, uh, feet per second, uh, you know, what type of primers that I'm using, uh, then over overall length, um, and then what the max is. So I identify with all that since I'm doing different calibers different times when I sit down to reload. And then on the top, you guys know that I take uh, all this is basically just a coffee uh, Folgers uh, lid. And what happens if you leave them set up all the time, this just keeps a lot of the dust and dirt out of there. Okay. You guys already know I got videos out there on how to make the inserts and make them smaller so your cases don't go upside down. Um, so like I said, I use these. All right. Now what you want to do. And then I'll explain this tube thing on here that it's going to help you. So basically just there's a little bit of a hole here for this to attach to your press. And you're going to take it, you're going to slide it in there. All right, now take your press, bring it all the way up. Bring it back down. You're probably about, I don't know, two inches down. And what you're doing now is you're going we're going to set the spacing between the tubes and the press. We're going to set that. And I usually set it I would say I'm pretty consistent about an eighth of an inch. So you're going to take and put the nut back on the bottom of this. Alright, you're going to need uh, two 7 16 inch wrenches. You're going to put a wrench on the top nut. Keep that about an eighth inch away. Go ahead and tighten up that bottom one. And you know what? I need to uh, grab another 7 16 I think that first one went on this uh, bolt down here. Okay, make sure you still get your clearance that you're looking for. Like I said, I set mine about eighth of an inch. Okay, and then you want to cycle it up and down and make sure it's not hitting your press. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some brass in here.
let's see, we've got uh, probably a few more we can put in this other side over here. I'm gonna help it along a little bit, speed this up. Okay, set that aside. So now we've uh, loaded all the cases in. And just because I'm doing it on uh, video, that's usually when uh, things don't uh, go very well for you. And I'm looking around and seeing if there's any cases that are upside down. And there appears not to be. So that is a good thing. All right. So now what we're doing is we're going to be pulling the handle down. And when it goes back on the back stroke, a brass is going to drop. And I'm let this thing is, I've got it loose so good, the thing is just wanting to go forward on me. So I need to quit yakking. Okay, so, and then what it does is it advances uh, this case into the shell plate. Alright, so if you notice, I've got two cases hitting each other right now, and I've also had one uh, brass case fall over, so that means that I don't have this set up correctly here. So let me move it a little closer together and see if that makes, makes it uh, correct. And then tighten that up again. See what we we'll get this time. Okay, you still see it? Every one of them's falling over, so it's still not set up right. All right, now what we need to do is that's already telling me that it ain't a matter of tightening it up. It's the nut above needs to be adjusted. And this is always fun because what's gonna happen is they're all gonna start running out of the, the tube. And we'll go ahead and do that. So you want to lift this out, and I mark mine with the hose as far as what the correct depth should be. So I'm going to put this back on. Let's try to dial in. The correct height on your cases. Once again, keep it about an eighth of an inch off the press. Go ahead and tighten these two nuts. And make sure, like I said, that it's not uh, hitting your press. Okay, we're good there. Let's take two of these. We're going to drop it into this empty one. Okay, we're going to cycle it. Is it going to drop okay? Alright, it dropped okay. It went right where it was supposed to. It dropped it. It advanced. OK. 
Okay. Now, we're not going to stop right there. We're going to see if this is uh, where it needs to be. You've seen that first. You've seen that the, they were hitting, they were falling, they were leaning over. Uh, there wasn't enough clearance there. this put this right here let's see I need to zoom out just a little bit okay we're just gonna cycle this see anything wrong with it Okay, so you seen it still falling over, so it's still not right. So take this, and you're, we're going to move that the the nut above the hole is we're going to bring that up slightly. Go ahead and tighten them up. And again, make sure you're getting that eighth of an inch and it's not hitting your press. Okay, we've ver verified that. Because this is troubleshooting, I want to put six more in there. And one thing which I just noticed my back uh, shell plate guide that keeps the uh, centered on that and also when your uh, cases go through make sure you get that uh, tight okay one fell down again and another one fell down so that means it's still not right What I want to do Okay, so it's dropping down, okay. Going to slide and dropping. Okay. We need to come down a little bit more. So again, it's dialing it in, and when this happens on your press, this is troubleshooting. Go ahead and tighten that back up. And what we're looking for Is none of them falling over? Okay, let's try it again. 
again. I think we're about there. And let's see, let's uh, do a close up there. All right, so it's dropping down, moving forward, dropping down, moving forward, dropping down, moving forward, dropping down, moving forward, and dropping down. All right, all right, so I would consider that to be dialed in, but let me show you a couple things. I know what the dimensions are supposed to be, but I want, you should be able to do this and not have maybe some of those shortcuts, because uh, the more you know about it, it's going to make it easier for you. Um, so for an example, what I want to do now, since we've got it dialed in, is I use uh, red tubing and what I like to do to help uh, cut down some of those uh, troubleshooting issues where you can just can constantly just be reloading and not always focused on having to do things to the press uh, to fix things um, so I use this uh, like I said uh, tubing and what I try to do got another Another marker here. And I'd like to try to go and put tubing in between and then next time I take it off or something's going on I know exactly what my reference point is. And let's see, where's my caliper? Okay, if you want to on a 40 caliber, uh, the distance between the top nut and the bottom nut that sits right on the hole uh, is 0.456, and that's in inches. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that my, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of tubing. Now, it didn't take us very long to dial that in, but um, why well, spend all that time um, if you've got to take it off and you've got to do something to it, why go to all that uh, trouble and time um, that you're not actually reloading? Or better yet, that you're not out there uh, shooting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this nut back off again, loosen this up. We're going to take this nut off here. Okay, we're going to take this off. We're going to take the nut off above the hole on the carrier. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this little piece of tubing that I cut. You're going to slide it all the way up. We're going to set it right back in place. Oh, wait a minute. We're going to put that nut back on. That goes above the carrier. Go ahead and thread that all the way up against that tubing. Okay. Put it through the hole. Take the nut on the bottom side. Run that up. And you guys know the routine. Let's go ahead and tighten that up. And again, when it comes up, make sure that you don't, it's not hitting your press. If 
tighten that puppy up. Okay, it's not hitting. All right, I'm never satisfied. Let's uh, let's put some more in there. Let's fill it back up again. We'll do another six. Okay, and let's uh, zoom back in again. All right, so she's gonna drop down. It's gonna go in, drop down. Run the carriage out. Sometimes my finished rounds uh, will slip and fall on the floor instead of going in the bin. Um, there's things I could do to fix that. Okay, all right. So your primer set up. We've talked about the depth of your uh, primer and how you can set it up, how it works, how it functions. We've uh, installed the nut and bolt down here. We've went in as far as if you need to move it in or move it out. Uh, we've talked about the screws here. Top screw goes tight. Bottom screw is uh, you t uh, back it out just a little bit, probably the thickness of your fingernail. And then as, as you're dialing in where the two cases are coming together, right here, has a lot to do with this second uh, uh, screw right here. Start uh, going actually uh, screwing it in. Um, and the finished results, if you're looking at it and you want to cheat and you want to use a filler gauge, I think it's roughly a three thousandths of a gap here between here. And that's uh, for uh, reloading your uh, 40 cal. So, alright, that's a lot of stuff that we've covered today. Uh, what we're going to do next time is we're going to go ahead and start putting the, uh, uh, the turret in there. We're going to put the, uh, start putting some of the dies in there. Uh, we're gonna put, uh, you know, a year ago Lee came out with a different type of a powder drop. I love them. Uh, those discs, uh, these, the new ones are a lot faster, a lot easier to use. Um, a lot easier to use. Uh, we're also going, I'm gonna show you the parts that you need to order if you want to put a, a, a bullet die on your press and how it works. I'm going to show you another die that not a lot of people know about of how to use it in your second where your our primer actually is going up. A lot of people use it where it lines it up. But if you're using some of your rounds that you need to flare uh, the case of the mouth of the brass, there's a die that you can get to put in station number two. So we'll go over that. Um, you know, you guys have already seen some of the videos where we actually have a system set up and it tells me if I got uh, powder in the case. I don't like doing this where I'm hovered all over it all day long. Um, you know, I don't, if it never happens to you, man, I congratulate you, but there's been times where you sit down and you get in a mode and, and you're starting to reload, and then you start noticing that your uh, case is coming off with the bullets in it, and you got powder in there. Um, I've had it where I've went in the past, that's why I came up with the primer alarm, is uh, I was out of primers. And I'd have to go back and pick them up out of here and take the bullets off of the cases and go back and put the powder back in. And it just, it's a lot of extra time that if I would have been on top of it to start with, I would have never had that issue. Um, so it's a lot of indicators. Um, there is a, a guy out there uh, that has a video, and this is very clever. I haven't did it, uh, but it does make sense. Uh, you can take this... Uh, die cast here at the bottom um, you can you can take it on the side where your powder uh, die usually goes up on your on your plate and you can drill a, a hole through your carrier and what you could do is you could take a, a lead light 
Uh, it could be any color you want, green, red, blue, whatever. I think he uses maybe blue. Um, and he's actually inserted it and threaded it uh, to the carriage. So what happens is, is when that case advances um, and you're looking down the top of your press, if that case uh, doesn't have a primer in it, that light shines up through the carrier through your shell plate and you know that you're out of primers or it did not get a, pri a primer. I wish I could remember the gentleman's name because uh, that's, that's pretty clever. Uh, I'm not saying that I won't do that going down the road, but I haven't did it up to this point. Uh, but it's a very, uh, a very good system that he's got. Pretty happy with it. So, as always, um, if you like my channel, please subscribe. Uh, please support the sport, especially with everything going on. With they're trying to take our our ARs away from us, and they're changing the age groups of people that can buy firearms and AR rifles. Uh, you know, we, we send our uh, kids, uh, men and boys, to uh, fight for our, our country to other countries than that at 17 and 18 years old. And so when they come back, if they're not 21, they can't, they can't, have a, they can't buy a firearm. I, I think that's something's wrong with that. Um, I'm not going to get into all the politics and everything else, but Florida, there was a lot of red flags up. and. You know, they fail. It's not the, it's not us honest people that are out there with firearms and that um, that are killing people. I mean, this is just crazy. But uh, you know, they got a long list of things that they're trying to pass right now, and um, just not right. Uh, especially it goes against our uh, Second Amendment. So um, you know, and and then you know, it they can vote. They can't drink till they're 21, um, but then they come back and they're let's say they're married and they got a couple of young kids, so they're not allowed to have a gun and protect their family. I know it's all going to come out in the end what actually is going to be law and what's not, and a, you know a lot of people's uh, very, being very vocal um, on YouTube right now. Uh, we've also seen on YouTube a lot of uh, uh, channels being shut down with three strikes. Uh, we've also seen channels that's did videos that are four or five years old and now they're uh, they're picking up some of those strikes um, on some of these things in regards to you know if you're doing videos with AR-15s or just this and that um, it, it doesn't make sense to me so um, with that said uh, like I said thanks for visiting my channel thank you and have a great day